Good morning. It's 8.30. We're starting this Friday morning off quite cool at minus one right now. It's uh, not very warm today. Just six degrees is our high. We could be a lot warmer. That warmer weather is around the corner. And Jeff will have all those details for us shortly. But first, we have a developing story this morning. Four blasts within minutes have rocked eastern Ukraine, injuring at least 27 people, including nine school children. Prosecutors believe it was a terrorist attack. The first blast happened at a tramway stop. The second went off near a school, injuring 11 people, and a third explosion near a railway station left three more people wounded. A fourth explosion was also heard in the city center, but it's unclear if there were any casualties. The controversial issue of abortion has been reignited. A motion has been tabled in the House of Commons asking a committee to examine when exactly human life begins. Conservative MP Stephen Woodworth says the current legal definition of when a human life begins is based on a 400-year-old law and needs to be updated. It currently states that human life starts when a baby emerges from the mother's body. Prime Minister Stephen Harper has often said he does not want to reopen the debate on abortion and will vote against the motion. A decision by Moody's Investor Service to downgrade Ontario's debt rating is being downplayed by the minority Liberals. The agency cites the province's growing debt burden and risks in achieving its fiscal plan. The, gro the government, rather, is facing a $15 billion deficit this year. Finance Minister Dwight Duncan says the downgrade won't have a significant impact on the province's finances or ability to borrow or pay interest on its debt. The city of Ottawa and its largest union have reached a tentative deal. City lawyer Rick O'Connor told councillors in a memo that the agreement comes after 20 days of negotiations. QB Local 503 represents 6,300 employees, which is 37 percent of the city's workforce. The deal still has to be ratified by union members and city council. Well, the best of the best in Ottawa's tourism industry have been awarded. Music and Beyond won the 2012 Ottawa Tourism Award for New Company of the Year. Innovation of the Year goes to Calypso Theme Water Park. And Canada Day 2011 gets the award for Event of the Year. Organizers say winners are chosen based on events that draw people to the capital region. And Mayor, Mayor Jim Watson was also given a plaque for his role as a tourism leader. We're just weeks away from a fundraising event that will support our community's youngest patients. The 7th Annual Walmart Walk for Miracles officially launched yesterday. The walk takes place on June 10th at Confederation Park in, in support of the Children's Miracle Network. All funds raised locally will benefit CHEO. The Walk for Miracles supports more than 2 million children who are cared for each year at the 14 children's hospitals across Canada. And this year's CHEO champion child is Leah Baird. The annual tulip festival doesn't officially kick off for about another week, but now may be the best time to see the tulips in their prime. With more on this, we go live to reporter Melissa Lamb. Melissa. Well, Annette, the tulips are blooming way ahead of schedule this year, and thousands of, thousands of them are already out along the canal in Dow's Lake. Now, this early bloom could pose a threat to the tulip festival, which runs until May 21st and sees more than 500,000 visitors. The NCC says it's too soon to tell if the tulips will last a full duration, so the best time to see them is now. The NCC is already taking a risk this year by moving the festival out of NCC property and into communities. Now, tulips are short-term bloomers and thrive in cooler t climates, so any sort of heat over the next month could pose a threat to their duration. Annette? All right, thanks for that, Melissa. Well, it doesn't seem like we're going to have... Any heat today?